Ireland. One for me, one from Walt Disney Company's Senior Executive Vice President, General Counsel and Secretary, Alan Braverman, and one for Co-Chair and Chief Creative Officer of Walt Disney Studios, Alan Horn, who had just been hired to run our studio. Horn and I read George's outlines and decided we needed to buy them, though we made it clear in the purchase agreement that we were not contractually obliged to adhere to the plot lines that he had laid out. Um, he then writes of Lucas's uh, reluctance to go to go let go of his own vision, um, which I think is really really sad to be honest with you. Um, and his acceptance that it was happening Disney's way. He wrote uh, he knew that I was going to stand firm on the question of creative control, but it wasn't an easy thing for him to accept. He reluctantly agreed to be available to consult with us at our request. I promised that he would be we would be open to his ideas. This was not a hard promise to make, of course. We would want to be open to George Lucas's ideas, but like the outlines, we would be under no obligation. He then says, uh, The truth was that Kathy Forster Reagan's writer and director J.G. Abrams, Alan and I, had discussed the direction in which the saga should go, and we all agreed that it wasn't what George had outlined. George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything, but he thought that our buying the story treatments was a tacit promise that we'd follow them, and that he, then he was disappointed that the story was discarded. I'd been so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way, and I didn't think I had now, but I could have handled it better. I should have prepared him for the meeting with JJ and Michael and told him about our conversations that we felt it was better to go in another direction. I could have talked through this with him and possibly avoided angering him by not surprising by not surprising him. Um, George felt betrayed, and while the whole process would never have been easy for him, he'd gotten off to an unnecessarily rocky start. George Lucas was pissed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, technically they lied to him. Yeah. Because, well, not necessarily lied to him, but they withheld the truth from him. Yeah, I mean, like, if I create something and I write an idea of where I think it's going to go and somebody buys that idea specifically off me, I'm going yeah. to assume that they're going to honour That's going to happen, yeah. And what they, it seems to me they bought them so that they could safely own it and they could never do anything else with it. Yeah. Um, they bought them literally just to sabotage them, them, destroy them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. This. I. I just find this really sort of sad. Um. I just. I. I. I, I just wish Lucas had a film finished the saga himself. Yeah. And then sold the rights. Because I mean, th- that is pretty much the literal definition of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. There. Yeah. Now, who's to say that seven, eight, and nine that Lucas wrote wasn't complete garbage? Like, well, we know it was going to be about the wills and about you know metachlorians and stuff like that. But you know what? It would have had that Lucas touch. Yeah. It would have had that, okay... Because, I mean, even the prequels are nowhere near as good as the original trilogy. Everyone knows that. But they still feel like there's an interconnectivity there. Yeah, of course. You can still go from episode 3 to episode Mm 4. But from episode 6 to episode 7, something's just not right. Now, it's a great movie, don't get me wrong. But there's just that magic missing from it. Everything's very formulaic with Force Awakens. Yeah. Then you get to The Last Jedi. Let's not start. But it's wrong in every single every single sense that it could be wrong. Yeah. Now we're seeing the trailer for Episode 9. Death Star, Palpatine, and or it's Return of the Jedi all over again. And there has been those recurring and recurring and recurring rumours that George Lucas is on as a super, as an advisor on this movie. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of it all, they came back to him. Yeah, because he's the only one that knows how to steer the ship. Because he knows what Star Wars is. Like, what happens whenever the captain goes to bed at night on a ship and they're running into an ice field? Yeah. You run and wake up the captain. Yeah. You don't try and pilot the ship yourself. I think, I don't know, I think Star Wars... You know, I, I tried to put this across in the article and I possibly should go back and rewrite it because I don't know if I've a word there properly. But people, you know, they talk about fatigue of Star Wars and people are saying, well, no, look, because you've got the Marvel movies. And I've been thinking about this a wee bit. The thing about the Marvel movies is that, you know, one movie is Iron Man, the next movie is Captain America, the next movie is Guardians <coughs> of the Galaxy, the next movie is Spider-Man, the next movie is Ant-Man and Wasp, the next movie is... So if one of those movies fail... It's okay. Yeah, because there's another one coming along that will take its place. Yeah, because you go and see Iron Man 2 and you're like, oh, it's crap. Yeah. But you're like, oh, but this... But Thor Wars looks pretty good, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But with Star Wars, the fans love Star Wars. They yeah. love that story. They love that universe. Those characters, you know, whereas Marvel... I mean, look at the Marvel movies. You know, some of the movies went on to make... Okay, okay. I, I think I know what you're getting at. It's basically with... Marvel, there is no subsection. 
With Marvel, it's all the one story mm. that runs through all 22, 23 odd, whatever number it is now of their movies. So you can sit down and watch Doctor Strange and there's little narrative points in there that will connect to past movies and yeah. future movies. But it's all the one long thing. So you can sit down and you can watch from Iron Man all the way up to Black Widow or whatever the hell, the Eternals or whatever else is coming out, right? You can watch them in that order. Or you can watch them in whichever order you choose. Yeah. With Star Wars, it's a pretty linear structure and there are subsections to it. So, like, for example, there isn't Iron Man, and then below it, there isn't, like, a war machine. You know what I mean? Like, if you understand where I'm coming from, whereas with Star Wars, a lot of of fans seem to go, I want episodes. I don't want Rogue One. I don't want Solo. I don't want whatever the hell else is coming out. I want episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, no, I'm not even saying that. What I'm saying is that, like, the Marvel movies... Like, what I'm saying is, a lot of people, there's a lot of Marvel movies, you know, that I really, really like. There's a lot of Marvel movies I think are pretty bad. Yeah. But one bad movie does not make me, you know, Iron Man 2 was crap. What came after Iron Man 2? I don't know, what was the next movie after Iron Man 2? Uh, Thor. Thor, right? Iron Man 2 was pretty bad. But it didn't put me off wanting to see Thor. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas The Last Jedi has made me very worried. Cautious. About. Yeah. The next one, the Rise of Skywalker, because to me, the Marvel movies, I know they're all interconnected in the rings, but they're not one big movie. Yeah. Whereas Star Wars is one big movie. Yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from. Do you understand? Yeah. Like what I mean is, I don't go to see, I don't go to Star Wars, I don't go. To, uh, I'm, try, I'm getting it hard to articulate this, but I'm not going to see a Luke Skywalker movie and then next week a Han Solo movie. And then the week after that, a Princess Leia movie. And yeah. the week after that, a Darth Vader movie. You're going, I'm going to, see, to see Star Wars. You're seeing the entire ensemble. Yeah, when I go to see Iron Man, I'm going to see Iron Man. I'm not, you know... You're not too I'm worried. I'm going to see Marvel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're not too worried if you don't see Black Widow or, yeah. or Ant-Man, you yes. know. Because you know that they've got their own movie coming out the following week. Yes. Or the following month or whatever. Exactly. Whereas Star Wars, I think, is... It's one of those movies that first cemented the the tentpole summer blockbuster. Mm-hmm. And it was rare. So in 1977, Star Wars comes out. You have to wait a full three years for Empire. Yes. You have to wait another three full years for Jedi. So whenever they came along, they had a lot to live up to. Yeah. Because there was so much. Like the, like the, the fever pitch was at an all-time high. Where people were like, I need to see this. So it had to be good. Mm -hmm. And if the slightest thing was wrong with it, it fell to pieces. Look at the reaction to Return of the Jedi when it first came out. Horrible in the middle, horrible in the middle. And it's only now over time that that subsided. Because it was the the follow-up to Empire, which is arguably still the best Star Wars movie ever made. It had a great twist sure, cliffhanger you know, it is the best yeah it, it still has a that great twist cliffhanger ending yeah look i am your father spoilers for like a what 30 odd year old movie nearly 40 now isn't it yeah jesus what but anyway yeah so that's why they had to be this this whole big great thing whereas marvel on the other hand are completely disposable they are chewing gum for the eyes I, that's just what i was about to say yes yeah so <clears throat> like say iron man comes out in 2008 yeah, it's great, but you you don't have that three year wait for the next one. Star Wars is an event. Yeah, Marvel is popcorn. It is. It's it's and it's that's fast food. No bad thing. That's, 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 no. again, that's not a bad thing. You know, as, as somebody said, I love steaks, but sometimes you just <laughs> right. want Burger King. Yeah, right. Let me elaborate on that as well a little bit. So let's say you go to McDonald's. Right, mm-hmm. you've had a rough day at work or something like that, or you just can't be bothered. So you just go. Do you know what will suit me right now? Is a nice big tasty Big Mac. And you get your Big Mac, you get out the drive-thru, you come back to the house, you sit down on the sofa, stick on Netflix, you take your first bite out of that Big Mac and it doesn't taste as great. And you go, oh, they've overcooked this, or oh, the sauce is off, or yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Smoosh it back up, throw it in the bin, go back, get a new one. Mm -hmm. And it tastes better. Now, imagine that, but you're going out for a steak dinner. Yeah. All right, and you sit down at the fancy restaurant, the nice music's playing, the ambient lighting's working its magic. You've just had your starter. Out comes your steak, and it's cooked wrong. Or there's something just not right about it, and it just doesn't taste nice. It's too chewy. 
All right, it's well done. But you might as well take your shoe off and start chewing on yeah. it, right? And so what do you do? Are you more pissed off that your steak wasn't cooked right? Or are you more pissed off that your burger wasn't cooked right? Exactly. You know what I mean? Well, here's the way it is in my house, right? When we watch Star Wars, we pull the curtains, we make popcorn, we sit down as a family, we pull the sofa up close to the TV, we put on the surround sound, and we sit and we watch Star Wars. Yeah. It's something you can't take your eyes off the screen for. When we watch Marvel... It's like, I have a couple hours to kill here, I have to do some work on my MacBook, what will I put on while I'm working? I'll stick on Iron Man. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. But, that's the difference. Yeah. And the problem is that Disney couldn't see the wood for the trees and they're treating Star Wars as Marvel. Yeah. And it doesn't work. But it's it's two completely different fan bases. It's completely different. And do you know what? It's two completely different fan bases because they've been conditioned to be that way. <coughs> They have. I mean, like uh, it's literally just what we've sat and talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Marvel fans, they had it from day one where it was like, okay, Iron Man's out. It's a, it's a, it's a success. Here's the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Here's Iron Man too. Here's Thor. Here's Captain America. Boom. Here's the Avengers where all the toys are out of the play. There's out of some the years where you're getting three and four with Marvel movies in a, in a year. Three's been the highest. Three been the that highest. was 2017. Like you had, um, what was it? Guardians 2, Spider-Man and Thor. Yeah. All in the same year. It, it is kind of too much like it is kind and of, on top is. of that let's not uh, leave out the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was running that year as well yeah. Agent Carter yeah now we have Disney Plus we're getting that stupid looking WandaVision show we're getting uh, uh, all these different shows yeah I, I think it is going to be oversaturation like I, I of think course it's oversaturation at, at a point you're going to get and the, the problem with it is as well is I understand I, I like the idea that you need to see the TV series because they'll lead into characters and developments in the movies and everything else but the fact of the matter is, I'm a married man with two kids. You know, you're yeah, busy. And a full-time job. We don't have time to sit down and watch 30 hours of TV in between movies. You really don't? Because, I mean, like, <clears throat> what is that saying about today's like generation? Yeah. Can we not just go out and have a walk? Yeah. Can we not just sit down and play a board game? Or better yet, have a conversation. Mm-hmm. All our, all our conversations, all our debates. Now, do you know what they are? They're podcasts. They're recorded and put online for other people to listen to. Yeah. It's all become a form of entertainment. But this is the conversation we had about Joker. I was looking forward to going to see Joker because it's a wee self-contained movie. Yeah. I can't wait to go and enjoy the shit out of it and go, and we're done. And no post credit scenes. Yeah. We're good. Like, once we're the good. movie ends, once it says director Todd Phillips, you can get up and bugger off and that's yeah. it. You're not missing a goddamn thing. Yeah, I am looking forward to that. And I, I love a good shared universe, don't get me wrong. But I also like the idea of just going to nuts. I, I said this to you, I think, on the last show as well, when I'd see Once Upon a Time in, in, in Hollywood... It was so nice just to go and see that movie. Just see a movie, yeah. Just to go and see that movie. And the great thing is, you didn't have to go in and need a refresher course on what happened in the six other movies that came before it. Yeah. Where yeah. are we now? What, what what stage is this at? Like how many times in cinema, you know, because just because of life, it's it's normally the big tentpole movies that you go and see in the cinema nowadays. Yeah. Which unfortunately is why cinema is on its absolute arse, but hence the way the world is. But, you know, where you go and see a movie and I'll be with my kids or I'll be with my wife and somebody at some point will lean in and go, Who's he again? Yeah, what, what's, what's that about? about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. I just, I, I, just I, I, think, I think this is the quintessential difference between Star Wars and Marvel. I think this is where Disney made their mistake. Yeah. You know, I think they just thought, right, well, just keep throwing movies at them and they'll be happy. No, I like Star Wars when you had to wait three years. Yeah, I mean, it's like a fine wine in its way. Yeah. Like, you don't just drink it straight out of the bottle then and there. You let it age and mature for a while. Yeah. Then you pour a nice glass, have a good sniff of it, and sip it and enjoy it. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it's like whenever you decide to get in shape and you're training and you're dieting, you look forward to Saturday night when you can go and get a Chinese, or you can go and get a greasy chip. Or God, go yes. Get, that's the thing you look forward to. Yeah. Whereas if you're getting Chinese three or four nights a week, you're like, uh yeah, you get sick of it. I don't really want anything. Else. I mean, like that. Like for me, my prime example of that is uh, there's a great Indian place in town, and I'll only ever go to it once a year, and that's on New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's my tradition mm-hmm. because it's so good. No, Mark, you don't get it. It's so good. I get it, I get it. I get it's it. one of the best things. Like, it's honestly, the Empire like, Strikes Back of, of Indian. It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. arguably the best Indian. I'm with, right? with you. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, they're naan bread. They're uh, papadoms. They're chicken. Chicken. Ch- cubes of chicken in the curry. Cubes. Cubes. 
like Squares. Like, like, I'm with you. Yeah. With, I can visualize it. Like Squares, but in a 3D 